Oh. Hi, this is Trooper Joe from Archangel of a Churn to Chivalry. And you can catch my show on 7avradio.com every Wednesday from 3 to 4. Thank you. That sounds like this. That's what we're going to talk about today on this show. I get knocked down, but I get up again. So I'm here, Trooper Joe from Archangel of Return to Chivalry, right here, right now, live on 7AvRadio.com. And I'm here with Will from the 5 o'clock shadow, right over there, taking care of business. So what does that mean, I get knocked down? You know, everybody thinks about getting not, they don't think about getting knocked down. What they think about is, well, I'm going to do this and it's going to be perfect and it's going to be just great because I'm me and that's the way life's supposed to be. So whatever I do has to be really good. But that doesn't work all the time, folks. Sometimes when, when you're engaged in one of your work ventures or, or a project that you need for school or something like that, you might get overwhelmed, and you may get knocked out, and that's when you get up again, you know, and and that's that's what that means. It, it relates in, to school, it relates to work, it relates to life, it relate, relates to love, definitely relates to chivalry, because chivalry is one of the main main tools you can use to regain your composure. So, uh, you know, because we're people. Uh, and and this is how I find people anyway. People people like to engage in a lot of their personal, passionate type of you know, adventures and stuff. And they talk a lot to themselves. But most people are actually bored. You know, as a group, the public is bored. You get a whole bunch of people in in a room and everything. You get a lot of chatter. You get a lot of noise. But they're bored. And then eventually, after the first five minutes, say, hey, what's up? And you go through the dab, dab for about a half hour, you know, then they start to complain. So they get a lot of complaints about why things aren't happening for them. You know, it's this one and this thing and, you know, back in the day and, yeah, we can never get our thing going or any of these things like this. And this just isn't something that's reserved for one type of person. It's reserved for everybody does this. It doesn't matter whether you're black, white, um, yellow, red. It makes no difference. You know, they start to complain and then they get knocked down. You know? And they like to think that they're going to get up again, but the problem is most people don't get up again. You know, they get knocked down and they stay there. They figure, well, I'll take the cop. Yeah, okay. You can take the count if you want to, but then they don't get up on their feet, they stumble and they go back down and now you're out. So now they got to find something else. But they're already carrying within their mind the stigma of, oh, I can't do this, I can't do that. They're going to project themselves as confident because they're going to be complaining. They're going to be saying, yeah, I almost had it. It was almost mine for the taking. It was right there. And then all of a sudden, these big, vehicles, big giant Lincolns and all these things all black rolled up and all these big mysterious people jumped out and took it right away from me, you know? It's like, it wasn't my fault, I didn't do it. But here's the trick, folks. Here's the trick right here. And, and some people like to say that, well, that's old-fashioned, pull yourself up by the bootstraps and stuff. And I have to agree with that. That's an old-fashioned concept of pulling yourself up by the bootstraps. But let's let go of the, of the cliché. If you want something, right, and you, you know that there's a great possibility that you're going to get knocked down in what you're doing, just keep this in mind. There are no gains, none, anything, not even taking a shower. Is there any gains without risk? You might be thinking, well, what's the risk in the shower? You might slip, bang your head, and you're dead. You know, there's a risk, <laughs> but you're still going to take that shot. And that's the same way you should go into treating whatever you want to do. There's a risk 
in anything you want to do. You have to put up something. You have to have some skin in the game. Whether that skin comes in the form of uh, monetary notes, like money, you still got to put up some money. You know, you want to be a big entrepreneur and have a fashion designer line and everything. Well, that takes a lot of work. Now, one, you got to you got to stay on top of the fashion. That doesn't mean that you go out to your local nightclub and see what they're wearing while they're dancing and everything. But that's part of it. That's part of the plan. You have to know what your public wants to buy. But you also have to know what the world public is selling at the time. So you got to look at books from Europe. You got to look in books from Japan. You got to look in books to see just where the public's mindset is. And again, you have to know what your media public is going to buy. <clears throat> and not only what your media public is going to buy, you have to know what your media public can handle. If you're selling all silk fancy things that cost a thousand dollars for a shirt or something, well, there's a poverty line that you can get right into. Because you're probably not going to make a lot of money if you're selling in, the, in your neighborhood. You know, unless you come in a neighborhood that rolls like that. But if you come in a regular neighborhood that, that doesn't have that type of money, you'll have great clothing, you'll have great design, and everything will look perfect, but nobody can afford it. So it's useless. So this is, this is where you got knocked out because you didn't do your work. You know, your due diligence, you did not do that. And then, and then from that, you got knocked out. But can you get up again? Of course you can. You can look at what your, your public wants and the final end of what they can afford. You don't want cheap stuff that they can afford. You want to have the final end of what they can afford. You want that product that's going to be something that looks good, feels good, makes, makes your public want to, want to just say, look at me, this, see this fat? Look at me, and look, this is fashionable. You know? Got it and stuff. But, you know, this is what I do. But that's where you want to go. And to start with, uh, like I said, you got to look at what's in Europe. What's England wearing? What's France wearing? What's Italy wearing? What are they wearing in Africa? What are they wearing in Japan? You know, what are they wearing in China? You have to look at all those things like that. Just to make sure that you got the, you got the right thing going on. You know? But, but if you if you don't, then then you won't be able to sell your product. You know, not at not at the rate that you want to sell your product. And even even if there's something something else, it might not be a clothesline product. Maybe you want to sell food products. And, you know, so you might say, yeah, this is great because you're sitting down there talking to yourself and you're really getting engaged within yourself. So you're saying, yeah. This is going to be wonderful, you know. I'm going to be able to sell all these type of high-end foods. I'm going to be able to sell this stuff. Everybody's going to love it, you know, because this is really good stuff. They, oh, wait till they taste it. And this is where the wake-up call should come into play. Wait till they taste it. Now, they may not have ever tasted the stuff you're selling to them, so they don't know anything about it. So, again, you got to do your homework. Or you get knocked out. But you can definitely get back up again. And 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 that's an that's an important an important part of, of getting knocked down and get back up again is make sure that you have a plan engaged so that you can you can do what it is that you want to do. Okay? Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna read a little off. It's little it's a little off. From, from the topic and everything, but I, a little Aesop fable, because I, I told you I was going to read you a couple of last weeks. So I know y'all been just staying in the same chairs from last week. You haven't moved anything, you know, but that's okay. After this, you, you guys can go up and, and everybody can take a little bit of break and go someplace. Let me see if I can find this real quick. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right there, right there. Here it was. <clears throat> and this has to do with awareness, you know? And what I mean by awareness is knowing your surroundings and, and things of that nature. 
Now, this is about the Gant and the Lion. Now, Gant is just a little itty bitty pesterous bug. He's a nuisance. It's a Gant and the Lion. Okay? And like I said, this here is to know, know your surroundings. And like I said, this is a plan so that you understand and you work your plan. But it's offbeat, so it doesn't directly go that way, but I think it does. Right, here we go, folks. You ready? Hold on. A gant once went up to a lion and said, I'm not in the least afraid of you. I don't even allow, I don't even allow that you are a match for me in strength. That's that little gant talking to this big old lion. What does your strength amount to after all? That you can scratch with your claws and bite with your teeth? Just like a woman in a temper or nothing more? But I am stronger than you. If you don't believe it, let us fight and see. See, now the Gant already had a plan on how he was going to fight this lion and show the lion how he is bigger and stronger than he is. You know? So saying, the Gant sounded his horn and darted in and bit the lion on the nose. <laughs> When the lion felt the sting, it, it, in his haste, he crushed him. He went to crush him, and he scratched his nose badly, and it began to bleed. But failing altogether to hurt, hurt the gant, which buzzed off in triumph, <laughs> elevated by its victory. Presently, however, it got entangled in a spider's web and was caught and eaten by the spider thus falling prey to the insignificant insect after having triumphed over the king of the beasts. <laughs> so you see, it's a little off, it's a little off, but what happened here was the Gant went in there with a plan, so he's showing off, you know. He got a plan, he's going to beat the king of the beasts, he's going to beat the lion, he's going to show this lion just what it feels like to get, to get entangled with him, the Gant. Because he thought he could beat the lion. And he did it. He was doing fine with the lion. He strategized. He had a plan. He went in there and he attacked that, that lion and bit him on the nose. You know how mosquitoes do. And the first thing you do is you swat it and you slap yourself in the face. Because <laughs> you really weren't thinking about the, the mosquito. So he goes in there. And and the because the claws he he ripped at his nose and he's bleeding and everything. Now the gant's all oh, this and that and he, you could just see this little gant fronting, doing his happy dance and everything and his who's your daddy dance on the big old lion and wasn't paying any attention to his plan, didn't didn't take account of his surroundings and fell into the spider's web, got caught and the spider ate him. <laughs> so, and see, this is like I'm saying, when you when you get down and you get back up again, he didn't get back up. <laughs> he, he didn't get back up. He was nothing but did it. But if he had done his due diligence on his homework, he would have known that there was a spider around there and that the spider had a web. So in, in, in his plan, he would allow for this to happen. That, not that the eating part would happen, that he might fall prey to a spider or, or something in that nature. And this is the same thing like if you're trying to start a business or do something like that or anything that you're trying to do in life. If you don't look at all the variables, you might fall victim to something that is unseen but right there in front of your face. You just didn't see it. You just It was invisible for you at the moment because you were so engaged in trying to do the thing that you had told yourself you could do, but you really didn't plan for yourself to be able to accomplish that task. Even though the task could be done. Just like the Gant, he beat the lion in that one bout, but it cost him, you know, he got eaten by the spider. So that's a little off-end thing. I might read another one for you later on, folks. A little, another Aesop favor. I sure do like Aesop's favor. But I want, I want to bring you back a little bit here, you know, to, to some other things about, about um, I get, you know, doing something where you've got a possibility of getting knocked down. There's a key factor, too, that, that we've talked about quite a bit on this show, and that's loving yourself, you know? 
in loving yourself, then you, you have confidence in yourself to be able to look at all these different avenues of approaches that are going to be used by you to accomplish your task. But if you, you don't have that, that self-love of loving yourself, that, that'll give you the confidence to know, I can do this because I'm going to be well planned for this here. I'm going to take, make it my business because that's what it's going to be, is your business to look at all the possibilities. I'm going to look at them twice, maybe three times. I'm going to see where everything's coming from. If I see something that's a nuisance, I don't pay any attention to that. Don't, you know, by loving yourself, you don't have to go over there and worry about what the, the negative thoughts and the negative words that's going to be cast against you, because they're going to come. Because that's, that's what people do. Because like I said, people are bored, so they're going to be complaining about their failures and stuff. And if they see you starting to make gain, all of a sudden they're going to try to have some negative things to say against you so that they throw you off your game. You know, you, you get away from your plan, even though like the, like the little gant, he beat the spider, he was running, but he got off his, he, he didn't account for his game. So in life, if you're doing this, and then you get thrown off your game because somebody you don't even care nothing about starts talking into evil about you and everything. For, for me, that's a risk thing that's going to come with any kind of development that you want to produce whether it's academic, whether it's whatever, it, it really doesn't matter. Starting a business, that we're kind of like talking about, or any of those things like that. Going to school for some of the kids that may be tuned in right now and trying to get an A so that you get an entrance into a good college or just learning something because you enjoy the subject. There's always going to be somebody in the background that's going to want to say something negative about you because they're bored. And the public is a boring, boring entity. We are totally herd animal. We all get bored together. We all sit around and complain. And, and just we just kind of pile our boredom on top of each other till it overflows. Uh -huh. Well, I'm going to take a, a little break. I'm going to play another song for you. And then I'll be back. All right? And we'll talk some more about this. Uh, I get knocked down, but I, I get up again. And we're going to stop play a little song for you about about self-love and the, the things that you can do to help you with self-love. You good? I get the beat, but he get eaten up. <laughs> Push the button. Am I back? You're back. Hey, I'm back. I'm looking at the man in the mirror. He wears a cowboy hat, folks. He wears a cowboy hat. The man in the mirror I see is me. Just like the man in the mirror that you see is you. And you, too, can wear a cowboy hat. And if you don't want to, you can definitely be an archangel. Yeah, that's just something like that. So, you know, making change isn't just about trying to change your character to um, be able to be a... Uh, a, a public figure or a happier person because we're talking more about entrepreneurship and you get knocked down and get back up again. Some people can't get up. Some people, like I said, they're so boring that they, they get knocked down and just start complaining because that's the thing that people want to do. And, and that's all right. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just that you know, you never really get out of your own way to be able to, to help yourself grow. And that's the most important thing is the self-love aspect. And then, you know, there's like old Michael Jackson. He got knocked down and taken out. But <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, sometimes he wasn't, he would like to get. He was not paying attention to what was going on around him. And sometimes those things happen to him. So, with, with that said, I got uh, the question. Will 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 got a call? I called him. Uh, yeah, the texter. Uh, he texted in and he asked, um, "How do you feel about minority? What do you think about minority leadership?" Okay. Um, what do I think about minority leadership? That question was from a good friend of mine, Method. How you doing, Method? 
glad that glad that you're listening and everything. And I know that you're one of the minority leaders out here in the Ethiopian realm, and I applaud you for that. That's a good that's a good thing. You know, so what do I feel about minority leadership? The the minority leadership, I, it ain't a, for me. For for me, what I feel about that is just like I'm talking. You got to have a plan. It doesn't make any difference what your what your nationality is or what your gender is or any of those things. You got to have a plan. If you want to be a leader and and help the people that that you know and surround in your area or anything of that nature, you have to know those people's desires. You have to know those people's beliefs. You have to know those. What, they might have a different culture. You have to know things like that. And you have to know yourself to where you, to see where you fit in their lives so that you can help them have a better life and stuff. It ain't, it's, it's not really about going in there with a lot of rhetoric and a lot of, a lot of words to throw with somebody at the city council and stuff that just be, are the same old words that everybody keeps keeps using because it says you don't have a plan and you didn't know your people. We have the second question. Oh, okay. And and without without that plan and without knowing your people and stuff, you can't be effective. You, know, you can you can be like the Gant. You can go in there and the Gant definitely had a plan. But he didn't know his surroundings. He didn't complete the plan. He had a half a plan. He went in there with the first part of the of the glory. I'm gonna make a statement I'm on the lion. I'm gonna tell this lion. I'm gonna beat you down. And he went in there and he was able to do what he wanted to do to the lion because he knew he was fast and he knew his bite stings. And he did that and the lion scratched his nose and everything. But then he celebrated without knowing his surroundings. And that's something that if you're in a leadership position in any type of what, you can't do that. You just can't, just because you've accomplished the task at hand, you can't stop your plan and go running around the place and, and start celebrating and doing doing my who's your daddy dance now, you know, <laughs> unless you want to get eaten by the spider. Well, thanks for the question, Mepin. I actually got another question that came in. Yeah, uh, the second question is, who is responsible for the failures of this minority leadership? First, Mosaic, and now Central's Los America. Uh, how about the rest? What needs to be done? How can we strengthen the leadership? Who did this? Let's do it again. Mepin got another one. I, I, I really can't get into people's business and stuff like that. This, my show is, is is actually on chivalry, on how chivalry plays a part in in trying to trying to bring about a better change for the whole world and stuff. Um, Mosaic and 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 the Centros, I'm not privy to their to their to their plan of uh, action or any of those things like that. So I cannot tell who who would be responsible for any of those things like that. But in a real world situation, the responsibility generally starts at the top. If you're the president of the United States and you get attacked by a foreign country and this country was attacking you, the fault is yours if you didn't put people in place to do that. And another thing like, come on, you can definitely be an archangel. Yeah, that's just something like that. So, you know, making change isn't just about trying to change your character to um, be able to be a, a, a public figure or a happier person, because we're talking more about entrepreneurship and you get knocked down and get back up again. Some people can't get up. Some people, like I said, they're so boring that they, they get knocked down and just start complaining because that's the thing that people want to do. And and that's all right. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just that, you know, you never really get out of your own way to be able to, to help yourself grow. And that's the most important thing is the self-love aspect. And then, you know, there's like old Michael Jackson. He got knocked down and taken out. <laughs> sometimes. sometimes. Sometimes he wasn't, he would like to get, he was not 
paid attention to what was going on around them. And sometimes those things happen to you. So, with, with that said, I got uh, the question. Will, 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 Will got a call it on me. Uh, yeah, the texter, uh, he texted in and he asked, um, how do you feel about minority, what do you think about minority leadership? Okay, um, what do I think about minority leadership? That question was from a good friend of mine, Method. How you doing, Method? Glad, and glad that you're listening and everything. And I know that you're one of the minority leaders out here in the Ethiopian realm. And I applaud you for that. That's a good, that's a good thing. You know, so what do I feel about minority leadership? The, the minority leadership, it ain't, a, for me, for, for me, what I feel about that is just like I'm talking, you got to have a plan. It doesn't make any difference what your, what your nationality is or what your gender is or any of those things. You've got to have a plan. If you want to be a leader and, and help the people that that you know and surround in your area or anything of that nature, you have to know those people's desires. You have to know those people's beliefs. You have to know those, what they might have a different culture. You have to know things like that. And you have to know yourself to where you, to see where you fit in their lives so that you can help them to have a better life and stuff. It ain't, it's, it's not really about going in there with a lot of rhetoric and a lot of a lot of words to throw at somebody at the city council and stuff that just be, are the same old words that everybody keeps keeps using because it says you don't have a plan and you didn't know your people. I have a second question. Oh, okay. And and without without that plan and without knowing your people and stuff, you can't be effective. Yeah. You can you can be like the Gant. You can go in there and the Gant definitely had a plan, but he didn't know his surroundings. He didn't complete the plan. He had a half a plan. He went in there with the first part of the of the glory. I'm gonna make a statement on, on the lion. I'm gonna tell this lion. I'm gonna beat you down. And he went in there and he was able to do what he wanted to do to the lion because he knew he was fast and he knew his bite sting. And he did that, and the lion scratched his nose and everything. But then he celebrated without knowing his surroundings. And that's something that if you're in a leadership position in any type of walk, you can't do that. You just can't, just because you've accomplished the task at hand, you can't stop your plan and go running around the place and, and start celebrating and doing, doing my who's your daddy dance now, you know? Unless you want to get eaten by the spider. But thanks for the question, Mepper. Now, actually, I got another question that came in. Yeah, uh, the second question is, who is responsible for the failures of this minority leadership? First, Mosaic, and now Central Los America. Uh, how about the rest? What needs to be done? How can we strengthen the leadership? Who did this? Mepper's going to get it. Mepper Mep got another one. I, I really can't get into people's business and stuff like that. This, my show is, is, is actually on chivalry, on how chivalry plays a part in, in trying, to, trying to bring about a better change for the whole world and stuff. Um, Mosaic and, and, and the Centros, I'm not privy to their, to their, to their plan of uh, action or any of those things like that. So I cannot tell who... Who would be responsible for any of those things like that? But in a real world situation, the responsibility generally starts at the top. If you're the president of the United States and you get attacked by a foreign country and this country was attacking you, the fault is yours if you didn't put people in place to do this. And another thing, like, like I'm a little bit off the topic right now and get knocked down again, but in, in a leadership type of advanced type of thing, I personally believe that the best way to run an organization is to hire the best people you can find to run that organization and then get out their way, you know? You don't have to micromanage anybody. So there is no real, real finger pointing fault that can be 
be like that. I would guess because like I said, I don't know, I'm not privy to their insides of their thing. But I do know that those two organizations are a very powerful organization. They, you know, they, they have a lot of input for the development of this city here in Worcester. And without those two representations, that a lot of people are going to suffer that have no connection to, to Mosaic or to Central. It'll be behooving to everybody that's out there, whether you're Black, White, Hispanic, or Asian. If you're a person in Worcester, a resident of Worcester, with the gentrification that seems to be running down this way, and you've lost part of your your leadership, because those are leadership positions, leadership organizations in there, then a lot of your voice has been stifled. And with the stifling of your voice, the stifling of, of everything about you is in jeopardy. So I don't know. This is all I, I can say about that. All right, now I'm going to go back on my topic. <laughs> and I really want to thank for the question. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. I try to answer them if I can. But if I can't, I'm, I ain't going to make it up. And I definitely ain't going to throw anybody under the bus. Not on, not on, not on purpose. Now, now, I want to talk a little bit about about you get knocked down and, and you get up again. You know, there's one thing that that I think is very important about getting knocked down in anything you do, and I just touched upon it just a little bit with the question that was was given to us. You don't get up again by yourself. You know, that you don't make anything in in this society or any other society by yourself. There are no self-made millionaires, millionaires or any of those things. Those people who have achieved that level of success, but they didn't do it alone. You know, they never did it alone. Somebody has always been there to help. And that that's the key when you get knocked down and you get up again is that you have to let somebody help you get back up on your feet. And the most important part that comes with, with letting somebody help you is, rem is remembering it's a privilege. It's a total chivalrous privilege to be able to help somebody. So everybody out there, if you know somebody who's really trying to, to, to make a better life for themselves and improve themselves, it's a privilege to be able to help that person. You know, especially if you're helping that person from a level that might be higher on the social strata. You know, everybody said, well, you reach down and pull somebody up. You know, that that's fine. That's a fine look and stuff like that. And that's all about you. But the privilege of helping somebody just that you might know. And and the helping the helping comes in many, many different forms. And I think one of the biggest forms of the help that can really help somebody along their way. If, if they really went out there and, and put their best shot at trying to make a life for themselves, but they got knocked down and now they're trying to get back up, it's, it's easy. A cup of tea and a dialogue, that's it. Some people just need to talk out what happened, you know, and get a, get a, a response from somebody else, somebody that they consider to be trustworthy somebody they consider who might have credentials to say that they know about these things. But that's important, to be able to just have an open, free dialogue with that person. You know? And most of that dialogue is going to come in the form of listening. And that's the biggest privilege that could be bestowed upon anybody, is to be able to sit down with somebody and listen to what they have to say. Now, the responsibility of saying what you have to say is on that person. If you're going to be doing, trying to make yourself into something better than what you are, but you didn't do your homework, you didn't plan for it, and you just go in there and you're not, you're not saying anything, you're just complaining and, and you have a lot of negatives of why this wouldn't work, this didn't work, it's got one fault, these people did this, that, 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 and all those things. Boring. <laughs> That's what you are. You're boring. Go over there in the herd, eat some grass, get a little methane going because your conversation stinks. And the result of your stinky conversation is you don't get up. You just stay right down 
on the ground where you are. So, I mean, but the privilege that's bestowed upon the person who's listening and is reciprocating, it goes back and forth. You might be listening to somebody else's thing, and at the same time, if you're listening to what they're saying, if it's a positive type of listening, it's like, you know, should I have really taken a better look at, at, at what the English population is doing with their clothes line? Because I noticed that, that you know, the people coming to my store, they, they had a lot of um, crumpets. You know, I don't even know what a crumpet is. So, so maybe if they had paid attention to a little bit of the outer worldly type of thing, that there may have been something that could have made their business a, a lot better. And this is where the guy, person who's listening say, yeah, you know, I've noticed that, that kind of thing myself, that there's this, 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 and this, and this is the way I know that these people are moving into the neighborhoods and stuff, and this is what they do. And if you've got something that you're trying to sell to the public, you, you, can't, you can't change the public, <laughs> you know, that's not going to work. That's not a good plan. You can try, but it, it doesn't work. Some people think that, oh, my plan is to see how this is going to work. And in trying to see how this is going to work, I'm going to do this. Because Nero, he was the Caesar in Rome. And he wanted to see what would happen if he, when cities burned down. So he burned down Rome. Well, it's kind of a self-defeating type of way of trying to make your business work. So if you want to see how your clothesline business works, and you got a people who dress in, in some kind of English fashion that might be tight pants and tight clothes, because in, in England, their, their, their main staple of food might have been something that really didn't have a lot of calorie intake, so they were very thin. And you want to put them all in kimonos from Japan, ain't gonna work. <laughs> you know? It's just, it's not gonna work. They don't, they, they don't dress like that. Or if you want to put them in, in, in oversized big clothes, it's not going to work because they like to show up their, their thinness. So, and if they moved into your neighborhood and go in your store, they're not going to buy if you don't have any of the products that they enjoy. So you got to do your homework. And that's where the privilege of, of, of somebody just opening up a dialogue with a friend. And the friend is, in, is, is reaping all the benefits of just listening to you. You know, because that's powerful. That's powerful that, 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 that they, they have that much love and respect for you and you have that much love and respect for them to be able to sit down and really just enjoy a cup of tea at a time when you're feeling bad and have a failure and maybe come out with a positive type of, positive type of reaction to that. That, that's, that's a little bit about the chivalrous thing. It's a pleasure and a privilege to be able to help somebody. Yeah, and like I said, nobody gets there by themselves. It, it's just not going to happen. Nobody, nobody becomes successful in any, any walk of life that we have out here by themselves. Somebody has to be a mentor. And there's another thing that, that really a lot of people don't see, the, see is happening. People are watching. All the time, they're just like children, you know. Everybody know what children do. They look. It's like a, a parent's response is the same thing. What, what are you doing? I'm watching you. Okay. <laughs> All right. And they're looking to see something because somewhere along the line, somebody said to them, "All right, now watch what your father does, or watch what your mother does." They didn't understand it's just for that particular incident right there. That that instance in time, that 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 one little minute, watch what your father does or your mother or your big brother or anybody. They, their brains didn't focus on that. So they're watching you. Might be two weeks later. They're still looking. <laughs> they got their eye on you. And that's <laughs> that I lost all faith about them. <laughs> <laughs> but that that's what some people do, you know. People do it too. We watch. And that's that's what they do. And so alright, moving on now. Because <laughs> that got totally away from me. Sometimes that happens. <laughs> it just goes it just goes any way it wants to. Alright, 
I know, y'all want one more Aesop fable, okay? Let me give you one more Aesop fable while I regain my thought process here. All right, hold on, let me get one for you. Oh, man, I got one, I got one. I got one here. This is, I like this one too. This is called the serpent and the angel. Uh, the eagle, rather. An eagle swooped down upon a serpent and seized it in his talons. You know, that's his hand. With the intent of carrying it off and devouring it. But the serpent was too quick for him. And it coiled around him in a moment and then it ensued a life and death struggle between the two. So he got this eagle and this serpent fighting in the air. A countryman who was a witness to this encounter came to the assistance of the eagle because the serpent would beat the eagle up because he had already wrapped around him, taken out his wings. He had a good plan. In revenge, the serpent spat some of his poison into the man's drinking horn. So obviously this is way a while ago. So you know the, the serpent spit his, his, his poison into his cup. Heated with his exertion, the man who was about to slack his thirst with a draft from the horn when the eagle knocked it out of his hand and spilled its content upon the ground. Now the the moral of this fable is obviously one good turn deserves another. And that, that's what happens when you're looking out and you're, in, you're engaged in the, um, the happy moments of time, just listening to somebody else. You know, that's one good turn deserves another. Because you'll get that back. Some people like to call it karma and things like that. But it's mostly going to come back from the person that you showed that, that, that love and respect to just to sit down and listen to them as they were getting getting knocked down and getting back up again. Mm -hmm. So the privilege in being chivalrous, there's eight, I ain't gonna go through all the eight choices that I put down here, but I'll read to you kind of fast if I can find them. Yeah, there's eight choices that you can make that if, if you are passionate about doing something, regardless of what that is, there's eight, there's eight things that can possibly help you along the way. This is what I think anyway, anyway right? I'm going to read them out to you, okay? <laughs> All right, it has originated in you, so it's a personal, pleasurable thing. This it has to do with your thoughts and your planning, right? If the plan originated with you, it's personal, right? Even if you heard it from somebody else or anything and you took it upon yourself to I, I like that you know I'm gonna work that becomes personable and if you make it pleasurable don't fill it up with all the negatives from the start because if you fill it up with all the negatives from the start you're getting knocked out right so that's number one you know it originates in you so it's personal and pleasurable you know the rest of these things go folks don't write notes like I do you can if you want to, but I don't, I'm, I don't even want to. <laughs> so here you go. So one, choices on things that can help you achieve a goal, right? So when you got your pleasure with things like that there, make sure you make sound choices on this one thing that you, it's personal, right? And make sure the choices that you make are choices that you can handle and choices that you like, because that's what's going to be pleasurable. Choices on things which you know can hurt you, but the pleasure you get is, is immense. They're not good, right? That's that personal and the pleasure type of thing. You're going to make a choice on, on, on the plan that you want to follow so that you can achieve your thing. But if you make that choice based upon the end result of just an instant pleasurable type of thing, that's going to hurt you. No, you're not going to be able to walk through the regular steps of being able to, to, to achieve the goal that you set for yourself. So you don't, want, you don't want to do that. And choices that will have to have the greatest amount of work 
to bring about success and outcome. This is the choices that people run away from very quickly because they're bored. And in that public setting of being boring, they just want to complain. And in today's public setting, the complaint usually comes about the amount of work I got to do. They want, oh, man, it's boring. I, I ain't got time to do all this work. I can't do all that. This is too much work. Yeah, well, those people over there, they don't have to work that hard. Well, they're not at the same level where you are started. You know, if, if, if you start and you put the work in first, you got to put the work in, folks. You, your plan, you got to plan for that work. You may come down and you go through all the numbers and everything and say that, man, I don't have time of the day to do all this. So I got to buckle down on this here. What am I going to give up out of my pleasurable day so I can achieve the goal that I'm setting for myself? And if it's too lofty a goal, Right, to achieve, who am I going to get to help me? You know, who do I trust enough? Who do I love enough? Who do I want? Who do I know that's got my back that's going to help me? And this, this is important because that's all part of the work. And now, now you know, you got to know that, well, if I get this person, I got to reciprocate because they might want my help someday or whatever comes, you know, they get their share. So, the worst thing that you can do ever is make, make, man, I'm ready, Mike. <laughs> you try to do something. The worst thing you can do is try to write like me. <laughs> That's not going to work. But again, because I jumped right in, I jumped to post number four or number three. And, and that, that's okay because you get the idea, right? The things, the things that we do in life that have choices to be made on how we're going to achieve our goals are very, very important. They're more important than the, than the planning because they are part of the planning, right? The choices you make and the, the plans that you develop are going to be what's going to make you have a successful outcome in whatever it's going to be. Even if you want to be a home run hitter in the baseball field, the choices you make. You can go to the baddest cage and you can hit the ball for two hours and you can miss every third ball. And then you can make the choice. I want to be the greatest baseball hitter in the world, right? And the choice is obviously pretty easy. You got to stay in that cage a little longer because you're, you're missing a third of the ball. So you're not, you're not, you're not good. You're going to have to look at your stance. You're going to have to look at where am I holding this bat? Am I holding the bat too low? Am I holding the bat too high? Have I got this bat, it, it, you know, just way outside? I, I, I'm losing power. How do I swing my hips around? I'm not swinging my hips around hard enough to get there. I'm moving my feet too much. There's all those type of things that's going to come in play along with the hard work the hard work in this thing is two hours in the batting cage wasn't making it. You got to spend three hours in the batting cage. Now that's a whole nother hour out of your day. And you can say, oh, I don't have the time. I can't do this. It's too hard. You know? <laughs> of course it's hard, but that's what it is. But the choice you make is you can say you want to be the best, but you're not going to make it because you're missing a third of the balls. Every third ball you miss. So you gotta you gotta work on your stance, you gotta work on your grounding, you gotta work on your bat position, you gotta work on your eye, you gotta see the ball coming, you gotta work to see how the threads of the ball are moving, you gotta work on, on developing a second nature to do all these things like that. It takes a long time and takes hard work. And but you don't have to go it alone. You can have a friend right there with you who can just say, hey, you keep moving your, your, your lead foot. Don't move your lead foot. Sit back on that thing. Get those hips around when the ball comes. Now you're practicing how to hit that ball in the right way, see? So, and who, who, get, who gets the privilege out of and the most out of doing the help? 
well, you're going to get a privilege. You're going to get an excitement and a pleasure out of that by hitting the ball more, you know. But the person who you you chose as a friend and it took enough time to stay with you for three hours because you keep missing the third ball and just told you what you were doing wrong in an honest and clear fashion, they get the privilege. They're the chivalrous individual. You know, they get all the privilege, much more than you get, and you're the one doing the act. Your success is, is more powerful to them because you gave them the opportunity to help them, to be their friend. You can't get any better privilege and opportunity than that. You know? So when you, when you get knocked down, right, to get back up again, it takes work. It takes friendships, it takes dialogue, it takes practice, it takes risk, you know? And all those things together is going to amount to you getting back up. And you have to be honest enough within yourself to say, I got this, because you got to love yourself enough to be able to take all those things in stride you know? and say, I can do this. I can, I can. Sure, I like this person. He can help me. Doing fine. Thank you very much. Someday you might get the opportunity to help that person. You might just, and it's not big, grandiose helping things. It's just little helping things that make all the pleasures in the world and, and all the privileges in the world seem great to you. Not, not, those, not those big old giant things that, oh, you want to be the greatest CEO because somebody said, Okay, I'll front you the money so that you can get your business started and stuff like that. That ain't chivalry. He ain't doing that for you. He's doing that for himself. You know? Or any of those things like that. But the person who was saying, you're moving your front foot. Don't do that. Sink in there and get those hips around on that. And then you're, you're missing only every eighth ball. You know? You make great gains on that. Well, I'm going to leave out of here. And sorry that I got a little confused with my notes, but that's okay. Cause I I I, I get knocked down, but I get up again. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna keep me down. Nah, you're not gonna keep me down because I got good people surround me. I got Will. That's right. You will hear later on the five o'clock shadow right there taking care of helping me out on this show. I got many many people out there. Chantel will put the uh, seventh half radio on the map so that I can bring the, the sound, the chivalry out there to everybody so everybody can be chivalrous and be an archangel and wear a cowboy hat just like me. All right, I'm going to be out of here now. And thanks for tuning in. And I'll see you again next week. All right, I'm gone.